Good morning. Welcome to the Presbyterian Church of Bowling Green. It's great to see familiar faces, new faces out there. I'm Rob Hale. I'm the uh, husband of Eric, the Reverend Erica Solberg. You've heard her preach before. I'm, I'm an amateur compared to her, so I'll try to lower the bar uh, on today's message. Uh, I've got a few, uh, one announcement I'll make, um, and then we've got a series of announcements coming up. So next Sunday, immediately following our service, We'll have a reception on the landing outside the chapel to welcome Jan Morgan, Lauren Miller, and Dylan Miller uh, as our newest church family members. And so this is a big deal, have some new members like this. Uh, So hopefully you'll make some time and put it on your calendar and and show up next week for some cookies, punch, and conversation. Uh, And now Larry Warden's going to make an announcement from the PNC, Catherine Reber, and that's the pastor nominating committee. Catherine Reber will follow with an announcement from the PLC. I'm not sure what the L stands for. And then Clary Ellington has an announcement about our youth, uh, sca- youth-led scavenger hunt and picnic. Larry, you want to start us off? Thank you, Rob. Good morning. Oh, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Uh, the, uh, you, this will be short and sweet because it's pretty much what you've heard before. But I want you to know that we are meeting on a regular basis, probably every two weeks, sometimes maybe pushes to three. But uh, the conversations and discussions uh, that we engage in, are everyone contributes. We're all congenial. We're all on the same page. We're trying to find a, a senior pastor that will lead this church into the next chapter. There are a few out there, but it's not the easiest job in the world. So we assure you that since the committee's on the same page, that we will, like I say, try to do our best. Uh, what we need, or what we think we need, and you all are certainly welcome to have inputs, uh, we need someone that's able to share the good message, relates to all ages, and, and can understand a, an aging and a coming up congregation. Uh, they're out there, uh, or he or she won, and we'll find them one way or the other, we hope. Um, uh, we have scheduled this week a Zoom meeting uh, with a couple of people, one at least, and one is requesting, I uh, say prospective candidates are requesting a Zoom meeting. So, um, uh, and again, uh, if, if anyone knows a minister, um, uh, that's at another church, if you visit it or whatever, and you think they may be entered or something, don't hesitate to let us know this. We've been told that the chances are word of mouth is how that we will uh, uh, receive a new minister to carry us through. So, and, and it, that way we, we can view their sermons online. We, we, we kind of know if they're trying to fit our type of church or not before we say anything to them. Uh, please don't hesitate in, in contacting any member on the committee. Uh, lastly, but not least, we ask for your prayers in earnest that we may follow where the Holy Spirit wishes us to go. So again, any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. Thank you. Good morning. Um, So I'm here to uh, tell you a couple of things about the PLC, which if you don't know what that is, it's the preschool learning center that we have at our church. We have a preschool. Uh, We have two-year-olds, three-year-olds, and four-year-olds. They meet on Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and they are um, enrolling right now for the 24-25 school year. Uh, My son, Charlie, attended the preschool here. We had just moved to Bowling Green and needed a preschool for him. He is now a freshman in college. Um, So we had a great experience. If you know anybody who is looking for a preschool, um, send them either to our website or to, uh, they can call. Um, Our director is Kimberly Watkins. She's great. Um, So that brings me to the next announcement you might have seen in your bulletin. They are doing a fundraiser Um, Two weeks from today, um, they're doing a spaghetti lunch after worship in the fellowship hall. So there's information in the bulletin about that, but it's a great way for us to interact with the families of the preschool and to support them. 
Another way we can support the preschool is with buck in a basket. Um, as you know, we pass um, the offering plate and then there is also a basket where you can just throw in a dollar and um, PLC will receive the money collected um, from the buck in a basket this month. Um, and they'll just use that at their discretion. Thank you. The youth have planned a scavenger hunt for the congregation on May 19th, which is Youth Sunday. So everyone interested gets to gather in the fellowship hall and you can divide into teams, however you want, family, friends, and everyone gets one car. And then for the first 30 minutes, we'll go around town and visit members of the church that can't make it to visit us on Sunday. And then we'll spend the next hour solving clues that we've made and you'll go to different locations, take pictures, and then eventually everyone will meet at Preston Miller Park for a fellowship picnic and awards will be given to the most creative picture and the team that solves the most clues. For any more information on this event, please contact the youth, David Clark, or Debbie Tricky. Thank you. and mothers, come sisters and brothers, come join us in singing the praises of Zion, the praises of Zion. Of others, don't you feel determined to meet within the walls of Zion? We'll shout and go around, we'll shout and go around, we'll shout and go around, we'll shout and go around the walls of Zion, the walls of Zion. and mothers, come sisters and brothers, come join us in singing the praises of Zion. Of others, don't you feel determined to meet within the walls of Zion? We'll shout and go round, we'll shout and go round, we'll shout and go round, we'll shout and go round the walls of Zion, the walls of Zion, the walls of Zion. Wow, should be pretty easy to rise in spirit and body after that. Please stand. Please join me in the call to worship. From water to wilderness, over Jordan and into the land of promise, God remains with God's people. From Abraham, the ancestor of nations, and to the sun lifted up, God dwells with us, God's kingdom comes near. We walk with Jesus, for where he is, he would be also. The God of our salvation meets us on the road. The risen Lord is with us in steadfast love and faithfulness. Let us be glad and worship the Lord.
My bad. Everybody stand back up. No, I'll go ahead and sit. I'm just... Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful day? Um, please join me in the prayer of adoration and confession. Printed in the book. Merciful God, how fickle we are. We sin against you without even knowing it. Clear us, we pray, of any unknown sin and save us from willfully ignoring your way. Let your commandments rule and guide us. Forgive us for worshiping anyone or anything except you. Keep us faithful. Forgive us for failing to honor all our relationship with those closest to us and those who are distant neighbors. Help us to speak words of blessing and kindness rather than words that belittle or destroy. Turn us away from violence, falsehood, and selfish. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths will de- and our mouths will declare your praise. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. By words and gesture, we share signs of peace and reconciliation. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet one another. Good to be in a church that's so peaceful. Join me in prayer for illumination. Open our ears so we may hear you. Open our hearts so we may feel your presence. In the midst of these lives we lead, 
open our spirits so we may recognize you in our common activities, the meals shared, the friendships enjoyed, the days before us and the days of Easter ahead. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in responsive reading of Psalms 4. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many Lord is asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Amen.
Christ is risen. After that, wow. Um, today's gospel reading from Luke 24, 36, 48 occurs right after the disciples have heard that Christ has, has risen from the dead and that they can't quite believe it. Um, please stand for the reading of the gospel. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do, you, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his names to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. Please be seated. Let's pray. Dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, when Pamela Napier asked me to preach a couple of months ago, I readily agreed. After all, I felt the congregation would want an opportunity to experience the Jim Baker to my wife Erica's Tammy Faye. <laughs> we're considering developing our own husband and wife religious empire, and we're actually in talks with Ma Matthew to buy the Presbyterian's Unlimited brand. You've got to come to church a lot to get that one, sorry. I guess that answers my question. Anyway, seriously, it's almost always easy to get me to agree to something that's a couple of months out. As an Eagle Scout, I'm helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, and in this case, reverent. I started consulting the lectionary a couple of weeks ago to think about what I might say today. As most of you know, many of you may not, our denomination relies on the revised common lectionary to select the scriptures for each Sunday. I must say, none of the scriptures spoke to me, and I, got, I started to get a little nervous. What had I gotten myself into, and could I pull this off? I had four scriptures to choose from, Acts 3, 12 through 19, where Peter reinforces the message in Luke, the prediction of Christ's life, betrayal, crucifixion, and resurrection. Psalm 4, 1 through 8, the one Kelly led us through earlier, which I'll say more about in a few minutes. 1 John 3, 1 through 7, which also reinforces Luke, but has a heavy emphasis on sin and lawlessness, and that was a little bit too tough-minded for me. Luke 24, 36 through 48, which I just read and will have a lot to say about soon. So for personal reasons, I was most interested in the psalm, particularly verse 8. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. <clears throat> in recent years, I've been suffering from insomnia. I have no trouble at all, as Erica will tell you, falling asleep, usually in front of the TV. But I wake up around 3 or 4, and I can't fall back asleep. I've had a lot going on the last few years. I have a stressful job at WKU, man managing a lot of personnel issues, and those are the worst. Our family has had some significant challenges in recent years, and my body and I are getting older. Can you say male menopause? <laughs> oh, and did I mention the extreme political division and violence in our world today? There's a lot to be worried about. Anyway, I finally gave in to Erica's encouragement to get a sleep study done. I was worried that I may join the many people in the world who need a CPAP machine. My dad did, my brother has one, and I'm sure many of you use one as well. 
But my sleep study confirmed that I don't have sleep apnea. My doctor suspected that it was too much caffeine, but I've reduced my intake significantly, still no change. While I wish it were indeed something physiological, I'm pretty sure the cause is anxiety. I don't suffer from an anxiety disorder like around 19% of Americans do, according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. That sounds like a fun group to be in, doesn't it? <laughs> but please don't hear what I'm about to say as praying away anxiety, right? I don't think you can pray away uh, that disorder. There are excellent treatments now for anxiety disorders, and if you feel excessive anxiety, you should get help from your doctor. Now that I've offered up that disclaimer, I'll say that my feelings of worry have been on the rise probably because of a combination of worries for my job, my family, aging, and the political state of our world. But what do my sleep issues have to do with today's scripture? Shouldn't a 50-year-old Christian man with a stable income and good health be sleeping easy? Is my insomnia a sign that I'm not trusting in the Lord? Why can't I just turn this over to Jesus in the words of the great gospel group Bill Moss and the Celestials? Well, even the pre-Jesus psalmist Davis had tr David had trouble with this. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Even David, who the scriptures show us had a direct line to God, repeatedly pleads for God to relieve his anxiety in many psalms. And like David, we all, of course, have our own direct line to God. It's no great revelation that humankind has always struggled with anxiety, but over and over we fail to go to the source of relief. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? I think all of us do what the psalmist says, some of us more than others. We seek delusions, we seek false gods to find relief. We binge television, we drink too much, we obsess over sports, we distract ourselves in many other ways. I think it's inevitable and it's very human that we go to those distractions sometimes. And for some of the smaller challenges, they work pretty well. However, we need to heed David's advice in verses 3 and 4. Know the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Verse 3 makes me think of that old Carol King song, and James Taylor sang it too, You've Got a Friend. When you're down and troubled, and you need some love and care, and nothing, nothing is going right, close your eyes and think of me, and soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. I don't know if your experience has matched mine, but when I call, the Lord hears. The relief isn't always in the form I think it should be, but that's me typically getting in the way of God's light. The first part of verses 4 through 5 is a bit harder for me to understand. Tremble and do not sin when you are on your beds. Search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. I wasn't sure what to make of tremble and do not sin. So I turned to, it, uh, to the, new standard, uh, the new revised standard version of the Bible. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. I'm going to read it one more time. When you are disturbed, do not sin. This last part. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. That makes more sense to me, especially with verse 5's advice to trust in the Lord. In other words, you're going to be disturbed, you're going to tremble in the dark, you're going to be anxious in the night, but I think the meaning is, instead of distracting yourself, instead of deluding yourself, instead of trying to cover over those difficult feelings, do what the righteous do. Trust in the Lord. It's so easy, right? Wrong. It's not easy. And that's the genius of verse 6. Many, Lord, are asking... Who will bring us prosperity? I read this tonal shift as a shift to a human's typical need for immediate relief. We delay gratification very poorly. Who will bring us prosperity? In other words, who will give me relief? Who will make things better? There's what I think is a typical human desire to get to the end result, to make me feel better now. 
But the beautiful, striking imagery of the second part of six and all of five present an answer. Let the light of your face shine on us. In the dark night, God, please let the light of your face shine on us. Interestingly, the light isn't driving away the dark. It's just there in the dark. David shifts from a visual image to one that's much more tactile. Fill my heart with joy. You know that swelling up feeling, right? Have you ever felt it at night when you're battling anxiety? It's amazing. And I think it happens when, in an almost Buddhist fashion of acceptance, you accept the distress that's inevitably going to come. But you have the light from God's face shining on you in that moment. Pause and think for just a minute. What does that feel like to you? The light of God's face shining on you. What does that feel like to you? How, when it's night, when you're worried, when you're tossing, when you're turning, what does the light of God's face feel like to you? For David, it's pure. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. The New American Standard Version is clearer again, I think. You have put joy in my heart more than when their grain and new wine are abundant. The joy is there even more than in times of abundance, even more than when I prosper, even more than when I'm in the light of day. It's still night. Sorry. It's still night, but in peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Since I fumbled that, I'm going to read it again. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. I sleep because God makes me safe. The things that make me nervous, the things that keep me up at night haven't gone away. Many of them don't go away, and I think it would be naive to think they will all ever go away. There will always be suffering. There will always be worries. But with the Lord, we can get relief. We will be safe. We can sleep. And the next day we'll awaken, face the day, and sleep again. Over and over we go through this pattern with new worries, new anxieties, and even if we sometimes remember that God is with us, we will often forget as some of the, at some of the most difficult times. But then, when we are at rock bottom, remember that the light of God's face shines on you and makes you safe. But wait, there's more. You thought I was done. Not that short. It's the third Sunday of Easter, after all, and Christ really punctuates this message in all of the best ways that the Gospels do. Recall that today's reading from Luke opens after Christ has arisen, after the women went to the tomb and were reminded by the men whose clothes gleamed like lightning that Christ told them he'd be crucified and be raised, after the women told the disciples and they didn't believe, after Peter went and checked the tomb and was still wondering what's happened, after Christ traveled with two men on the road to Emmaus, reminds them that they are foolish not to believe that Christ has arisen as was foretold, and only, they, and only to recognize him for Christ as Christ and for Christ to vanish and for them to rush to tell the apostles that Christ has arisen, which they should have already known. In rereading Luke 24 up to today's gospel, I'm struck by how foolish Christ's main disciples are. They remind me of myself in only the worst ways. Luke emphasizes over and over that the Old Testament has predicted Christ's path saying directly in verse 7, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised. However, when he appears to the disciples in 36 and greets them with, peace be with you, they were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. Christ questions their doubt and shows them his wounds, essentially saying, I'm not a ghost, I'm flesh and bone, just like you touch me. 
Of course, they're still dazzled. They still don't know quite what to believe. So again, he provides them with tangible proof that he is not a ghost. He asks for something to eat. They give him a piece of broiled fish, and he eats it. It's almost like an anti-magic trick, emphasizing humanity, Christ's humanity, over his divinity. The fleshiness of that broiled fish emphasizing the fleshiness of Christ's body with food, fish, that often signifies Christ, ichthus in Greek. Symbolism aside, Jesus tries to convince the disciples that what he told them before he died and what had been foretold in the Old Testament is true by sight and touch and by demonstrating that he could consume food. But they still need to be reminded. And he reminds them one more time. And it's not in anger. This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. In our Old Testament lesson, I think the message is that day after day, humans have a tendency to forget that God's light shines on them in the darkest, most anxious times. When, when we remember that God is with us, when we ask for him to be with us, we are safe. We can have peace even through the anxieties, fears, and worries that are inevitable. The beauty of Luke is that we see that even Christ's biggest fans, the disciples, even those who actually knew him, worked with him, touched him, they struggle to remember the good news that, and you've all heard this before, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the Old Testament, it's the light of God's face that makes us safe in the midst of our troubles. In the New Testament, Christ is, according to John, the light of the world that saves us. Certainly, it's his actual self-sacrifice that saves us. But to me, it's also his example that saves us. The example to put others first. The example to accept one's fate, but to strive to do right in spite of inevitable suffering. The example to care for the weakest. The example to be patient, even when you know the people you love the most like the disciples, are sometimes going to forget how much you love them. It's very interesting to me that today's psalm closes with the feeling of peace. In peace I will lie down and sleep. And Jesus greets the disciples with the line that we say every Sunday in no doubt the most joyful part of our service, peace be with you, when we pass the peace. Both scriptures give us advice on how to carry on despite our troubles. And so I close with a reminder to remember, though I know we will sometimes forget, remember that in the anxious times, the light of God's face is on us. And remember that Christ lived, Christ died, and Christ lives again. That he not only died to save you, but he provides you with an example for how to live every day. Amen.
Please join me now in reading the Affirmation of Faith from the Confession of 1967 that's printed in your bulletin. God's redeeming work in Jesus Christ embraces the whole of man's life, social and cultural, economic and political, scientific and technological, individual and corporate. It includes man's natural environment as exploited and despoiled by sin. It is the will of God that his purpose for human life shall be fulfilled under the rule of Christ and all evil be banished from his creation. Already God's reign is present as a ferment in the world, stirring hope in men and preparing the world to receive its ultimate judgment and redemption. In steadfast hope, the church looks beyond all partial achievement to the final triumph of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, to him be glory in the church and in the Christ Jesus in all generations forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we come this morning to bring our offering, I want to remind you that the buck in the basket is now going to the preschool learning center. So when the basket comes by, just because I said buck, doesn't mean you can put a five or a 10 or a Lincoln or somebody in there. So but anyway, am I supposed to pray before the offering? Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all that we are blessed with. We thank you for our food, our shelter, our clothing, and especially for clean water. Let us use these offerings today to better the world for people around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You'll find the words to this on the back of the bulletin there if you haven't turned the page yet. Let's sing together. Lord, I come. I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my
Kelly wrote a really good prayer, so we're going to do that after I bless the offering. So we're changing up the order a little bit. Let's pray. Lord, you are the giver of every good gift. Accept these offerings, we pray, that through them we may do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with you, our sovereign and our God. Amen. Please join me in prayers for the people. O oh, listening God, we lift to you now the prayers of your people. Holy One, God of new life, give thanks for the glory of your presence in our worship, that no matter where we are, you see fit to draw us together in community. Knit us together and teach us to serve each other as you taught your disciples, trusting you will feed us trusting you will be with us even when we least expect you. And like your disciples, O oh God, when we draw up empty nets, expecting nourishment, help steady our faith and direct our paths towards your living waters. This morning we pray for our members and their families and friends who are facing daunting challenges in their lives. We pray for their comfort and their healing and their calmness. We pray for those that have loneliness and sadness facing them in the coming days and months. And today we pray especially for Marilyn Calhoun, Madeline Chandler, Ann Humphrey, Jim Johnson, Tim Lee, Herb Simmons. And especially, Lord, we offer up prayers for your little one. J.D., John Duncan, who is facing tests in Nashville at Vanderbilt on Wednesday. We also offer up prayers of thanksgiving for our church and its commitment of all the members and for its future of our coming growth, for the children of the church and for their parents that faithfully bring them every Sunday. We give thanks for our veterans and for members now serving at home and in foreign lands for the sacrifices that they, and especially their families, are making. We pray for Michael and Matthew Spencer, for Devin Jackson and Jack Grice, and for St. Carmichael as he attends West Point. We are a blessed congregation, serving the risen Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and sing the closing hymn number 546.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I don't know. You. you know, many times I've done this. <laughs>